In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a simple piece of geometry that represents our asset to view inside of our VR environment. Alright, so really quickly, let's go to our Create panel, and we're going to create a simple cylinder just to get us started. And let's hit F4 so we can see the wireframe on that. And I'm going to begin modifying some shapes on this geometry. And I'm going to start out by creating the globe, or the, the shade itself, that porcelain part. And let's go ahead and convert this to Edible Poly. And I'm going to come in and just roughly begin to shape this out. So this will be kind of the top here, and I'll go in and I'll select these edges and scale those in just to kind of round out this piece here. And we don't have to be extremely accurate on this. We just want to kind of get the idea and just to eliminate any problems that we could have uh, later on down the road. So I'm going to inset that. I'm going to set that to zero, actually. And then what I'll do is I'll scale that in and then pull it up just to round it off and then I'll extrude it straight up and I like to just set these values to zero because I'll extrude it and then I'll pull it up myself so we've got something kind of like that um, I feel like that's a little bit too big so I'm gonna scale it down just to give us a better representation of the overall size of that object and as of right now you don't have to be absolutely perfect on the size or anything, uh, we're just not uh, we're not quite there. So we have that piece, and then I'm going to add in just some stand-in pieces to kind of help with that. So the major part that we had next was going to be the base of that, and so I'm going to take the radius down quite a bit. And let me actually align this to the object, and let's do the X, Y, and Z position, and pull that down. And we need to be a little bit smaller, and then also our height needs to come down. So something along those lines. It should be about the same size as the opening that you have there, roughly. And then I'm going to create a couple of planes, because I'm thinking about those ornate arm pieces that were coming off the side. I'm thinking about possibly using a texture with opacity on that, and I want to want to see if that will work. So I'm going to left click and drag this out and roughly get the size of that. And I'm going to take my length down, maybe my width down a little bit further. And the way this is going to work is it's going to attach to the base and then it needs to sit underneath the shade and then it's going to come off of that a little bit to attach to the rods that are going to be on that. So let me let me take that up about to where I had it to begin with. So something like that. And yeah, I think that looks good there. So now that I have that, let's create the rods that are going to attach to this piece and then be centered. So I'm going to create another cylinder. Let me do this in the perspective view. Drag that out. And let's take the radius down. You might notice that I'm making the radius quite a bit larger by uh, to begin with because if the amount is too small, so it's something like this, it won't actually create it. And so I make it large and then I dial that down based on what I need. Uh, so now let's go ahead and align it to this piece here. And I'll pull this up above. And then I'm going to rotate it with my angle snap on. And I'm going to rotate it until it touches that piece. So something like that. So now that that is set, let's actually go ahead and align this piece as well so that way everything is centered. So we'll do something like that. All right, so now our cylinder, we can actually take the height down. And we'll set it up to something like this. All right, perfect. So now what I need to do is I need to make two more copies of this so that way we get the overall feel of the asset that we're creating. I'm not going to worry about the heat shield, that little ball that was dangling from the center down. Um, that's not absolutely necessary at this point. We get the idea of what the asset is supposed to look like right now. So 
with this, um, let's grab this cylinder and I'm going to rotate it and with the angle snap turned on I'm going to hold down shift and rotate this 120 degrees and let's make it an instance so if we make any changes to it it will automatically update to the other one and actually I wanted to do that twice so let's rotate it 120 degrees and then let's add a copy and then hit OK so now we have three of those let's do the same thing for this piece but you'll notice the pivot point is centered on the object not necessarily on the lamp so let's change its pivot point really quickly by aligning it to the, the lampshade. And I don't have to worry about pulling it down or anything. I'm just going to center it up, hold shift, and rotate it 120 degrees, and then do that twice. There we go. So now that I have this object, what I want to do is I want to kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm going to change its color and apply just a standard material to it. And let's call this um, chandelier underscore blockout MAT for material. Uh, so that way, whenever it imports into Unity, you know what that material is for. So now that we have that applied, we can actually export this out and get it set up for Unity. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by selecting everything and going to export selected and then I'm going to use this chandelier underscore test and I'm going to bring that in so let's just simply uh, save that and overwrite that file there and with the FBX options make sure you have smoothing groups tangents and binormals checked if you want to preserve any of your edge orientation um, go ahead and just hit preserve you could also triangulate it now if you like, but Unity will do that for you automatically. And then everything else should be just fine. Under Units, make sure it's set to Automatic. We want to make sure that the up axis conversion is to Y up, because in Unity, Y is up. And then we're going to use the version FBX 2014-2015 just to alleviate any errors going from 3ds Max 2016 to Unity 5. Then we're going to hit OK and we're going to um, hit OK on this. It's having a little bit of trouble with that geometry because they are planes and we didn't convert those to edible polys. It's automatically going to do that for us so we don't need to worry about it. So now what we need to do is we need to bring this into Unity and test it inside of our VR headset. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then we'll come back and do that. Alright, so I've gone ahead and opened up Unity and you can find the VR testing project um, inside of the Unity Files project folder. So inside of this, um, I've gone ahead and created a folder called Tests, and I brought in our chandelier that we tested and we've built. And you can take a look at it. You'll notice a couple of things. Uh, first thing is that the, well, actually just one thing. The planes, uh, you can't see those on one side. And so we'll have to make sure that we create a shader that will allow us to see both sides. Now I've already done that. I've applied a shader to this and I've created it for you so you can just add it to the material. So go to the materials folder and select the material for this and we're going to change the shader to standard double sided. Now with that we should be able to go back to our test object and you'll see the planes on both sides. Perfect. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the OVR folder and let's go to scenes and let's just use this simple room. Double click on that and let's go to our scene view and let's find the room and I'm going to select something and hit F and then let's just simply move inside of there. So you can see the camera the way that it's facing and I'm going to add in our object our asset into the scene here and um, let me try that one more time. There we go. And let's pull this up into position. And I'm going to leave it right out in front of the camera because I, I want to be able to see it kind of up close and uh, see some of the different issues that might arise in this. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and hit play. And you should have your Oculus headset already set up here. And you can see that mine is working. And I'm going to look through the headset here and a couple of things that I notice about this is that um, 
I can see the aliasing on the that thin geometry on the rods, and that's creating a little bit of an issue for me. And so we might have to thicken that up or even just break up the long straight lines in that. Another thing that I'm noticing is that that plane on the back side, if I come over, it starts to get really, really thin. And so that could cause a little bit of an issue. Now, if this was an asset for something like a mobile VR experience, you may not be able to get away from that. Um, you may have to make that plane just so that it's low geometry and uh, low polygon count. Uh, it's all about with staying within budget. Uh, and what I mean by budget, I'm not talking about a polygon count specifically or a triangle count specifically. I'm talking about frame rate. With VR experiences, you need to make sure that you're hitting that 60 frames per second mark. Uh, because if any, you have anything less than that, it r could make the player uncomfortable. And that can create a lot of issues. So I'm pretty happy with the overall look of the asset right now. Um, I think we can we can deal with that pretty well. So now that we have identified some areas that are going to need to be changed um, and what we can do about that, let's go ahead and start working on creating the high poly asset. Now I don't want to go through every single step of this, but I will talk to you about some things to remember whenever you're working with your high poly assets. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get into that next.